Space AP Productions. That's where it all started at, man. I was born right here, 225 Mega Avenue, man. Crazy memories over here. I'm saying it was nine of us in the house. My grandfather was a superintendent, so we was living here rent free. And I'll never forget, man, Mr. Johnson was the landlord. My grandfather, you know, got into an accident doing some work. He fell down the stairs or whatever, and he couldn't work. And I remember I came home from school with my mother. He come to the door, he was padlocked out, man. You know what I'm saying? All this right here was like the little area where we used to play, and the entrance to the building was down here. My grandfather fell down the stairs, man, and kicked us out, man. And we had to end up going up the street, a couple buildings downstairs with my mother's friend. And then once everything got situated, we ended up moving uphill to hunting and terrorists, man. But there was so many memories over here. And I remember I was in the county jail, and my mother sent me some pictures. And she was staying at Carmel Towers at the time from the window, smoke everywhere, and the building burnt down, man. Heartbroken, man. All those memories, like, washed away with the building. But I can never forget this place, man. Raised here, born here. Great memories. Seeing it's like there's nobody out here, grass growing all crazy, man. Bugged me out, man. But I had great times here too, man. You know what I'm saying? My mother was strict, so you know she ain't let me come outside like that. I went up the hill, played ball, but as far as chilling out here, my mother wasn't going for none of that. But all my homies was out here. It's, this was like, I love this, I love this place, man. All my years, man, down here, grew up in this rough neighborhood, in this rough city, period. You know what I'm saying? I managed to stay out of trouble and avoid prison. I go to college and go out Pennsylvania to go to school, end up getting in trouble and going to prison, man, but it's, it's crazy. After being there for a couple years, you know, I started to experience, you know, a lot of racism for the most part. So, you know, going out there and going through that, you know, it kind of turned me into this super pro-black Huey Newton, you know what I'm saying, type of dude from being in that environment. So you know, a lot of a lot of things started transpiring on that campus, man. And on uh, one particular night, I remember walking with my homie from Philly, and somebody yelled out the window, you know, black people smell like shit. So you know, at that time, I had been getting in trouble or whatever prior to that. So I was kind of chilling, trying to stay low, stay out of trouble. But once that happened, I kind of wanted to brush it off, but my man didn't take it so lightly. So we ended up going through a situation with a group of guys that particular night. Police came, I left, you know what I'm saying, we parted ways. About a month later, you know what I'm saying, they was having a, a, a party in one of the dorm rooms on the campus. And you know what I'm saying, some of the same guys was there. And you know what I'm saying, they walking past, you know what I'm saying, giving me dirty looks. So I'm saying, you walking past mugging me, I'm mugging back. So when he say something like, what you looking at? I'm like, nigga, I'm looking at you. So we start going back and forth with words, and it was just me and another one of my homies, you know what I'm saying, from Philly. And, um, you know, we started exchanging words or whatever. So it was getting real heated and tense, and my man grabbed me. He like, yo, chill, you know what I'm saying? Leave it alone. And we step off. He grabbing me, we step off. So at that point, I'm like, all right, all right, I'm a dad, I'm going to leave it alone. So it was so packed in the place, you could barely maneuver. So as we making our way, you know what I'm saying, towards the door, it come back with like seven dudes. Seven dudes and me, I, you know what I'm saying? I told you, I was on my Huey Newton shit or whatever, and it's all white dudes. I don't care how many you come back with, I'm not scared, I ain't backing down for nothing. They going through it, and I'm just sitting there in the cut. In my mind, I'm like, all right, soon as one of these niggas trip, you know what I'm saying, it's on. So they start throwing around the N-word. I'm gonna let them take it there, and then we gonna handle it accordingly. And one of them pushed me. When they pushed me, it was like a couple steps. I stumbled down the stairs, and the first dude that came down the stairs, whop, rocked him. Beating the brakes off him. My man, afterwards, I didn't know it at the time, after speaking to him, he ends up getting knocked out from the first punch. So it was like two dudes on him and the rest of them getting at me. 
So after I'm whooping the dude ass, the army tried to pull the coat over my head. Once they pulled the coat over my head, now they think they're gonna get me to the ground. At that point, man, I had a knife in my pocket. I went in my pocket, got the knife, and I just hit whoever was front of, in front of me. It was me being attacked by a group of guys. I didn't start that, they started it with me. And you know what I'm saying? I end up getting arrested and charged with attempted homicide, man. And you know, they hit me with like a half a million dollar bail, like I was John Gotti or somebody. Then they reduced my bail and I ended up making bail 15 grand. So I was fighting the case from the streets. Long story short, went to trial. Blue trial, man, and got convicted of attempted homicide. They sentenced me to eight to 20 years in prison, man. And you know, that, that whole experience, it just made me aware how foul the system is. Because there's somebody that was being pounced upon by a group of guys defending themselves and they charged me with attempted homicide. You know, going through that, whole situation with the courts, you realize how foul this system is, man. But you know, that's the nature of the beast, man. I survived it. Staying sucker free, stress free. I'm looking kind of rough right now. And take it to the barbershop, get cleaned up, man. Holler at my homies up in there, man. No doubt, man. Born and raised, man. No, my whole life, man. And it was crazy, man. When you, like, I mean, no, you know it is what it is, man. It ain't the best place in the world, it ain't the worst place in the world. But I tell you, when you when you can't be here, like I did eight years in jail, not being able to be here, not being able to be around the people, man, you miss this place, man. I miss this place, and I swear, I promise you, yo, everywhere I went, I carried it on my back. Everybody knew, even even if they ain't know, even if they ain't know about no. They did after they after they came across me, man. Brick City, man. That's how that's how I was repping it, man. Everywhere. It wasn't me, man. It felt like everywhere I went, the way I moved reflected where I came from, yeah. And that's how I moved. First time being locked, man. First time being locked, getting smacked with all that time, man. First time ever being arrested. Doing eight. Could you imagine that? Like you talking about you sitting in the county, this this penitentiary work, murderers, rapists, man. I'm talking about cold killers, man. And it's me. 19, 19, 20 year old kid. Are oh, we on Bergen, man? Bergen between what? Lehigh and Shepherd. I used to be up here too, man. My father ran the strip. Yo, Bergen and Renner, it was BST back in the day. Before we had Bloods and Crips, we had block gangs and all that <laughs> posse. So my father was BS, BST, man. Bergen Street Terrorizers. But he pretty much had this whole strip on lock, man. So I grew up over here too. Everybody over here know me. It's a little ab, you know what I'm saying? My father, big ab or whatever. But this this part of the upbringing too, man. Actually, my grandmother lived right on Bergen and Renner, man. So I was all through here too, man. Whole weekway section, I was all through here, man. But we on Bergen, man, about to get this chopped. Not my bed, you know, I keep the bed. But up under this hat looking real rough. I gotta get this cleaned up. I had to go. I had to My go. shit was crazy under that hat. My shit, man. Good now, you need your hands. No doubt. Back to the city right here, man. I've been getting. See, I've been coming here for forever, yeah. Boy, this shit. Word up. Long, long time. Yeah, yeah. Word up. Yeah. It's crazy. My mama used to come here with me at first. <laughs> My mama used to come in and join with me. Word up. Sticking with the with the kid since day one, since I started out. So it's always a pleasure, man. Yeah. There you have it. 
know what I'm saying? It's my life. All facts, man. Authentic. You know what I'm saying? Prison of the President is not just the name of a project. It's actual factuals. I went from being a prisoner, now I own my own. Born and raised Brick City. Came from the bottom. Everybody loves the comeback story. Everybody roots for the underdog. Now the underdog winning. Who's amazing? Brick City. My dad.